hello everyone. This is Dr. Adel Bondok, a professor of anatomy and neuroscience, Mansoura University, Egypt. Today I am going to discuss the visual pathway and the visual reflexes. As we know, we should start by the receptors. So what are the light receptors? The light receptors are the rods and the cones in the retina. We know that the retina is formed of 10 layers. The first layer is the pigment epithelium. The second layer is the receptors. So we have rods and the cones. We have about 120 million rods in the retina and 6 million cones in the retina. The rods are absent in fovea centralis, while the cones are concentrated in fovea centralis. The rods are extremely sensitive to light. Therefore, they are responsible for night vision. So rods for night vision. Regarding the cones, they are less sensitive to light. Therefore, they are responsible for the day vision and the color vision. So, night vision, rods, day vision, cones. Regarding the steps of the visual pathway, okay, we we'll start by, okay, this is just a simple uh, description. We we'll start by the retina, start by the receptors in the retina. And we should know that the retina is divided into temporal fibers and the nasal fibers. Temporal fibers and the nasal fibers. From the retina to the optic nerve, the two optic nerves join to form optic chiasma. And from the optic chiasma, optic tract. Optic tract synapses in the lateral geniculate body. Axons of the lateral geniculate body form the optic radiation and the optic radiation terminates in the primary visual area 17 for perception of light and from area 17 to area 18 and 19 for recognition of what we see. So the visual pathway start by the retina optic nerve, optic chiasma, optic tract, lateral geniculate body, optic radiation, primary visual area 17, and then visual association area. Let us give more details about the pathway. Okay, so we'll start by the retina. Start by the retina. So we'll start by the receptors. The receptors are the rods and the cones. They transmit the information light to the rod cells and the cone cells, then to the bipolar nerve cells of the retina, and then to the ganglion cells of the retina. Okay, so we'll start by the retina. Axons of the ganglion cells form the optic nerve. So the optic nerve is formed by the axons of the ganglion cells. The two optic nerves join at the optic chiasma. And at the optic chiasma, the temporal fibers, look at the blue fibers, the temporal fibers enter the ipsilateral optic tract, while the nasal fibers enter the opposite optic tract. Okay, so at the optic chiasma, temporal fibers enter the same optic tract, nasal fibers cross to the opposite side to enter the contralateral optic tract. From the opt okay, so optic tract. So the optic tract contains temporal fibers of the same eye and the nasal fibers of the opposite eye. Optic tract synapses in the lateral geniculate body. Axons of the lateral geniculate body form the optic radiation. And the optic radiation has two divisions. The two divisions pass through the internal capsule. Which part of the internal capsule? The retrolenticular part of the internal capsule. Actually, the optic radiation is divided into two parts or two loops, upper division and the lower division. We'll see them in the next slide. Optic radiation terminates in the primary visual area 17. And the primary visual area is present 
in the upper and lower lips of the calcarine sulcus and from area 17 to area 18 and 19 for recognition of what we see so optic retina receptors rods and cones then rod cells and cone cells bipolar nerve cells ganglion cells axons of the ganglion cells forms optic nerve optic nerves join to form the optic chiasma at the optic chiasma temporal fibers enter the same the epsilateral optic tract and the nasal fibers cross to the opposite side to enter the opposite optic tract therefore the optic tract contains temporal fibers of the same eye and the nasal fibers of the opposite eye optic tract synapses in the lateral geniculate body axons of the lateral geniculate body form the optic radiation optic radiation runs in the retrolenticular part of the internal capsule it ends in the primary visual area 17 above and below calcarine sulcus and from area 17 area 17 for perception of light and from area 17 to area 18 and 19 for recognition of what we see so this is the optic radiation this is the lateral geniculate body this is the optic radiation so what are the parts of the optic radiation and the representation of the retina in the optic radiation optic radiation is formed of two parts two divisions upper division and lower division upper division is called loop of barum so barum's loop this barum's loop is present in the parietal loop and contains upper retinal fibers so remember upper division contains upper retinal fibers the lower division is called the loop of Meyer and this loop of Meyer is present in the temporal loop it contains lower retinal fibers so what is the termination of, of loop of barum and the loop of Meyer the upper division loop of barum terminates above calcarine sulcus so it terminates in the cuneus the loop of Meyer okay loop of Meyer terminates below calcarine sulcus which is the lingual gyrus so what is the termination of the optic radiation optic radiation terminates above calcarine sulcus and below calcarine sulcus above calcarine sulcus is the cuneus Below calcarine sulcus is the lingual gyrus. Above calcarine sulcus, lobe of barum. Below calcarine sulcus, lobe of Meyer. So regarding the retina, what is the representation of the retina in the visual area? Okay, we have upper retinal fibers and the lower retinal fibers and we have this area which is called macula. Okay, macula. And the center of the macula is fovea centralis. Okay, so upper, remember, upper retinal fibers terminate above calcarine sulcus. Upper retinal fibers terminate above calcarine sulcus, which is the cuneus. And the upper retinal fibers which terminate in the cuneus are the temporal fibers of the same eye and the nasal fibers of the opposite eye. The lower retinal fibers, remember, lower, below, lower. The lower retinal fibers terminate below calcarine sulcus in the lingual gyrus. So upper retinal fibers above calcarine sulcus, lower retinal fibers below calcarine sulcus. Okay? And how about the macula? The macula terminates in the posterior one-third of the primary visual area. So this is the representation of the retina in the primary visual area. Above calcarine sulcus, lobe of barum, upper retinal fibers. Below calcarine sulcus, lobe of Meyer, lower retinal fibers, and the macula, the posterior one-third. Now, what is the effect of a lesion in the visual pathway? Actually, the temporal fibers of the retina see the nasal field and the nasal fibers of the retina 
سي ذا تيمبورال فيلد سو ويل ستارت باي اي ليجن ان ذا اوبتيك نيرف ليجن ان ذا اوبتيك نيرف causes epsilateral blindness blindness total blindness of the CMI and it will lead also to loss of the light reflex direct and consensual okay lesion in the optic chiasma is divided into two parts central lesion and the peripheral lesion central lesion will cut the nasal fibers of the two eyes so it will lead to bi temporal hemianopia peripheral lesion in the peripheral part of the optic chiasma will cut the temporal fibers okay so it will lead to bi nasal hemianopia actually central lesion of the optic chiasma is usually due to pituitary adenoma And the peripheral lesion of the optic chiasma is usually due to aneurysm of the internal carotid artery. So lesion in the optic chiasma, central lesion, will cut the nasal fibers, will lead to bi-temporal hemianopia, bi-temporal hemianopia. Lesion in the peripheral fibers of the optic chiasma will lead to bi-nasal hemianopia. Now lesion in the optic tract Optic tract and the lateral geniculate body and optic radiation. Optic tract, lateral geniculate body and the optic radiation. Optic tract contains the temporal fibers of the same side and the nasal fibers of the opposite side. Okay? And the same for the lateral geniculate body and the optic radiation. So it will lead to contralateral homonymous hemianopia. Contralateral. Contralateral homonymous hemianopia or hemianopsia. Now lesion in the visual area. Lesion in the visual area. Above calcarine sulcus, above calcarine sulcus, or lesion in the cuneus, will damage the upper retinal fibers. The upper retinal fibers. So it will lead to contralateral homonymous lower quadrantic anopia because it will destroy the upper retinal fibers while lesion in the lingual gyrus which destroy the lower retinal fibers it will lead to contralateral homonymous upper quadrantic anopia total lesion of the optic of the primary visual area will lead to contralateral homonymous hemianopia with macular spearing So macular spearing is a sign of a lesion in the primary visual area. Yes, total lesion in the primary visual area will lead to contralateral homonymous hemianopia with macular spearing. Now let us talk about the visual reflexes. We have two visual reflexes. Pupillary light reflex, okay. Pupillary light reflex, constriction of the pupil in response to light, okay, and accommodation convergence reflex. So the two visual reflexes, pupillary light reflex, accommodation convergence reflex, start by the pupillary light reflex. What is the meaning of pupillary light reflex? Pupillary light reflex, it means constriction of the two pupils in response to light. Constriction of the two pupils in response to light. Actually, 100% pupil pupillary constriction of the same eye and about 50% constriction of the opposite eye. Light reflex has two types. Direct light reflex, constriction of the pupil of the same eye, this one, and consensual light reflex, consensual light reflex, constriction of the pupil of the opposite eye. So pupillary light reflex, constriction of the two pupils in response to light. We have direct and consensual. 
What is the best way? Very simple. Start by the retina. Optic nerve. Optic chiasma. Optic tract. From the optic tract to the superior colliculus here, to the tectum, through the superior brachium to the pretectal nucleus. Okay, optic tract to the pretectal nucleus or pretec okay, pretectal nucleus. And from the pretectal nucleus to the edinger westphal nuclei of the oculomotor nervous, to the oculomotor nervous. To ciliary ganglia, short ciliary nervous, then to the sphincter pupillae of the two eyes, uh, causing constriction of the pupil. So, again, the pathway of the pupillary light reflex, okay, start by the retina, optic nerve, optic chiasma, optic tract, superior brachium, pretectal nucleus, edinger westphal nuclei. Oculomotor nervous, ciliary ganglia, short ciliary nervous, sphincter pupillae of the two sides, causing constriction of the two pupils. This is the direct light reflex, and this is the indirect or consensual light reflex. Then accommodation convergence reflex. What is the meaning of accommodation convergence reflex? Shifting the gaze from a far object to a near object causes three reflexes. The first reflex is constriction of the two pupils. Constriction of the two pupils by the sphincter pupillae to increase the depth of focus. Second reflex, convergence of the two eyes by contraction of the two medial recti muscles. And the third reflex, thickening of the lens to increase its power by ciliary muscle. So what is accommodation, convergence, reflex? When you shift the vision from far vision to near vision, three reflexes occur. Constriction of the pupil, of the two pupils, convergence of the two eyes, and the thickening of the lens of the two eyes. So what is the pathway? It follows the visual pathway. Retina, optic nerve, optic chiasma, optic radiation, lateral geniculate body, optic radiation, visual area. From visual area to area 8, which is the motor I feel the area in the frontal lobe, then to the superior colliculus. And the superior colliculus projects to two nuclei. The first one, somatic motor nucleus of the two oculomotor nerves to the medial recti muscles, causing the convergence of the two eyes. The second one, edinger westphal nuclei of the two sides. Okay, edinger westphal nuclei, oculomotor nerves, ciliary ganglia, short ciliary nerves, sphincter pupillae for pupillary constriction, and ciliary muscle for thickening of the lens. So accommodation, convergence, reflex. It means when you shift a vision from far vision to near vision, three reflexes occur. Constriction of the two pupils, convergence of the two eyes, thickening of the lens. The best way is the same for the vision. Okay? Uh, retina, optic nerve, optic chiasma, optic tract, lateral geniculate body, optic radiation, primary visual area, and then from the primary visual area to area 8 in the frontal lobe, okay, it's called frontal eye field area, to the superior colliculus, okay, cortico, collicular fibers, cortico tectal fibers, okay, to the superior colliculus, which project to somatic oculomotor nucleus of the two sides for contraction of the two media recti, causing convergence, and to the edinger westphal nuclei of the two sides, okay, causing con contraction of the sphincter pupillae and ciliary muscle. How about Argyle Robertson pupil? Argyle Robertson pupil means 
that the pupils don't react to light, so absence of light reflex, while accommodation is intact, accommodation is present. So Argyle Robertson pupil is absence of light reflex with intact accommodation. Where is the lesion? The lesion is in the pretectal nucleus. So it is most probably due to syphilitic affection of the pretectal nucleus. So Argyle Robertson pupil, absence of light reflex, intact accommodation reflex, the lesion is in the pretectal nucleus. And thank you very much. Best wishes and good luck.